Hey everybody and welcome to the Unchanneled Video Blog. And today what I want to do is reveal my Fluke 289 multimeter. Now this thing's sensational. It's got amazing abilities and a ridiculous accuracy. So let's just get right into it. Now the Fluke 289 is a Category 4 multimeter under 600 volts or a Cat 3 under 1000. Now this thing's a beast in size. I mean, like, just look at the comparison here. I got a Fluke 289 obviously on the left and to the right of it I got a Fluke 233. And as you can tell, this thing is a demon in size. And if you compare it to the side profiles, you can definitely see this has a large footprint. So as a benchtop meter or something you're using in a lab, these things are awesome. But if you're throwing this in your tool bag, it's definitely going to take up a large amount of room. But the problem is it just has so much ability that you overlook it all. Now, one really clever idea by Fluke is the recession of the meter screen. And what happens is they extrude the rubber molding on this out. And what that means is there's a physical barrier between anything this thing drops on and the screen, so you're not going to damage or anything like that. It's a simple idea, but it really translates well. Now, of course, the Fluke has amazing quality in all their products. And right here, the rotary switch, it has very little opposition to movement, but when you put it in a position, you're not fighting to keep it in there, it just holds it. Obviously, Fluke has spent some time developing this with every one of their multimeters, and it's really carried through in this design. Now, Fluke's got a really bad reputation lately of developing tilting bases. I mean, Dave Jones on the EV blog points it out every week. But now this one right here, I think they've really done a decent job on it. It's just got some rigidity and it really holds itself up. Now the Fluke 289 is a data logging meter and it uses an IR to communicate all its signals, so infrared. And what that means is you're not going to get contaminants into the multimeter through a USB port or something lame like that. So it's really well thought out because now this meter is going to be really enduring. Now this meter is absolutely terrible when you're hand bombing it. It's just got massive weight to it and massive size. And it just doesn't really taper well to your hand. I know they got the rubber molding on this and that does provide some comfort. But the fact that it's just so large, it makes it extremely awkward. But the problem is we overlook that because of the ability of this meter. So let's actually start taking a look of what this thing's capable of doing. Now probably the weirdest thing when you first get this meter is when you want to turn it on. On any multimeter, you know, you just switch your rotary switch to the position you're good to go. But because of the processing power of this, it acts like a small computer. And it actually has a delay of starting up. As you can see, I just hit the on button and it's still not ready to go. So it's not a very fast multimeter. But once again, we keep overlooking these because of the ultimate ability of this unit. Now, one really clever idea by Fluke is they've included the manual with the system. But more importantly, they've included it in the multimeter. So when you click the info button, you have a complete layout of every little feature included in this multimeter. It's extremely convenient because this thing does offer so many abilities. If you ever need to make a reference, no problems. Now this multimeter without a question has the absolute best screen I've ever used on a multimeter. And what it is, it's a visual graphics array, so a detail on this is massive. And as you can see right here, I have a trend capture of a measurement I took of my phone lines. So you could actually see, you know, when there's an incoming phone call or an outgoing phone call or anything unique like that. Or right here when I was actually having a problem with my phone, I was losing my internet connection. It turns out it was a loose connection to the input of the house. But it gave me the ability to see what was occurring. So when the wind was picking up that day, that's when I was losing my internet connection. So it really is a cool feature, this multimeter, and I'll go into the details of it later. But as you can see, the screen on this is just beautiful, and you can really animate those details. As well as the fact they have, you know, the time, the date, and all these little relative things that you can use to see what's occurring on your circuit is really translated well through the screen. Not like your traditional multimeter where the details are not as elaborate as this one. And even better yet, Look at the backlight on this screen. It's huge. It's the best without a question I've ever used. When you're using this in the dark, no problems. Now overall, this is also the downfall of the meter is the visual graphics array. And what I mean by that is the fact that this thing has no battery life. When you're using this and also the incorporation of the processor because this is a small computer, um, you really only have 100 hours on bench top life. When you're taking a trend capture and you can eliminate the screen, you can get 200 hours out of this unit in max. So it's, once again, the pros and the cons of choosing this multimeter, it's not exactly what I call, you know, out in the field friendly. Now what I want to do is overlook all the features that this thing's able to measure. So I'm just going to start on the left hand side and work my way over to the right. So the first feature they integrated was low impedance measuring. So if you're doing a voltage source or something like that and you have a weird ghost voltage and you can now look into it. Now the next feature they integrated was regular AC measurements. But if you click the menu button under function 1, it's going to pull up a menu of even more details you can make within that measurement. For example, I mean, you could take the relative, so if you want to compare it to, you know, your your signal, your source, or something like that, or you can, you know, measure the frequency. So they've done a lot of little features that make the measurements of each ability even more diverse than what you originally would have thought it would be. Now the next ability of this is the millivolt AC signal, and it's really nice. I mean, it has the exact same features as your regular AC measurements, 
but now you have it dedicated for small signal processing. Now for the next measurement I just threw on a variable DC power supply and of course we're on volts DC and as you can see right here they have an analog bar graph that's going to give you a relative comparison of what's occurring on the circuit so you can see the voltage rising or lowering and that's available on every one of their measurements so it's really nice and if we click the menu button of course you can see a whole bunch of features so once again like your relative you can see if there's an AC signal added onto the DC so it's really nice for troubleshooting as well as you know your typical duty cycle so if you want to measure pulse with modulation now the next setting you have here is millivolts DC. So this is really nice when you're getting into that small signal processing and you want to see what's occurring on. But if you click the menu, you can see that you can also do temperature. And they have this for degrees of Fahrenheit, obviously. And now this isn't the Fluke um, thermocouple, and I gotta admit, that's one thing that really pissed me off when this thing came in the mail. I mean, you're spending really big money and it doesn't come with a thermocouple. It's really cheap on their part and it's a huge negative consequence because this is probably the most used function I have on this. When I'm trying to capture a, like a trend cycle of what's occurring, like heat dissipation, stuff like that, I use this meter excessively. So it's one of those things I'm really pissed off that they didn't include it. Really cheap on their part. Now the next setting we have on this multimeter is ohms, continuity, and nano siemens. And if we pull up the menu here, you can see that you have the ohms, the relative, and the beeper, which is continuity. And of course, it's got that fluke awesome ability. And it really registers as fast as I go. Any type of continuity is registered and indicated. And it's sort of cool right here. And when you do have that physical connection, as you can see on the screen, it shows you that there is a connection. Little feature, but you gotta admit, it's sort of neat. Now the next setting, what we have is forward voltage for diodes, as well as capacity. And that's a really nice feature, especially in combination with the alligator clips that come included on all Fluke multimeters. They're a huge little feature because they're extremely well insulated and just make a lot of measurements a lot easier. And as you can see, if you click the menu, there's not a lot. I mean, you either have the diode or the capacitors and the relative voltage. Now, as I was scrolling down the menu here, I went to the milliamps and amps for the AC-DC electricity. And as you can see right here, warning, and I really like that feature. I wish there was an audible beep that I was emitting to really enhance what it's doing, but it's telling you right now if you keep this like it is, it's going to blow a fuse. Now that I've corrected the actual banana jack connections, we can scroll up into the menu, and as you can see, it's the AC, DC, or AC plus DC, and relative peak, all those nice little features that really do set this multimeter over the top. Now once again, when you have the wrong banana jack connection, it really does correct you. It's really going to help you prevent you from blowing fuses and just keep you safe as well. Less chance of blowing up your meter or anything that could cause you harm as the operator. And right here is the dedicated microamps. And this is huge because this meter is not only for the industrial electricians, but also for the people that are doing the finesse work of electronics. And as you can see right here, it's pretty well identical for its ability and what it can take for measurements as it is in the amps and milliamps section. Now oddly enough, as you can see right here, I threw it to the last one, that's low impedance measurements. And it tells you that it's in the wrong connection, but in that setting it beeps, and I find that quite weird. But right here, it's low impedance measurements. So if you want to take, let's just say, the measurements of uh, windings on a motor, this is going to give you the ability with high accuracy to do that. And as you can see in the menu, all it is is relative. I mean, all it is is exactly what it is, and that's impedance measurements at low impedances. Now let's take into account the most important feature this thing's able to do, and that is trend capture. So you're able to see what occurs in the circuit over a period of time, and you're allowed to do this on any type of measurement that this meter is capable of doing. I mean, from something as ridiculous as impedance measurements to something as unique as temperature profiles. So let's get into it and actually do a sample. So I got my multimeter set to temperature profiles on degrees, and I have my thermocouple here, and what I'm going to do is set this to a one-minute cycle, and I'm just going to grasp it in my hand, and we're going to capture it every second and see what occurs over the thermocouple. So the first thing we have to do is we hit the save button to record. And then we scroll down to the record feature and we hit the F1 function, record. And it'll tell you everything you have to set. So the first one is the set duration. So days, hours, and then more importantly minutes. So we hit OK once we have that set. And then we go to the sample interval. And as you can see, it's already one second. And it tells you the memory available. So obviously you're not going to get in a situation where if it doesn't have the memory, it won't allow you to do it or it'll actually max out and then it will stop recording. And then it also tells you the battery. And that's great because if you make the mistake of, you know, plugging this into a circuit for two days and you realize you only have a day of power, it's going to alert you before it becomes an issue. Obviously, we'll record up to the point of failure. And it's a nice little feature because this thing does not have a battery life. When you're making these measurements over days, it has a maximum of 200 hours. 
And that's because they shut down the screen. In a regular operation, it only has 100 hours of battery life. So if we hit the start button, let's see what occurs. Now we just finished our recording here, and they give you three options, save, trend, and close. First off, save it. Um, you can rename it or whatever you want, but it's relevant to time too. It also puts a timestamp on it, so it's really nice and convenient that way. And then you can click the trend pattern to see what occurred when you're taking that measurement. And it's really nice because now you can really make relative comparisons to time. So if you're taking, let's just say, a, you know, a reading over a voltage bus or something like that, and you see a transient spike, you can track down what motor is giving you that terrible transient spike in your system. So as you can tell, there's a lot of really amazing ways to trouble your shoot new circuits with this. Now the next features it has is hold. So you can hold the measurement that you currently have if you just want to quickly jot that down or measure something like that. And then of course your traditional min and max. And it's really nice because it tells you the maximum, the average, and the minimum all at the same time while telling you the current. And as you can see as we jog it down, it beeps when there's anything massive going on in the circuit, such as a new high or a new max. Now overall, what's my opinion on the Fluke 289? It is one of the best multimeters I've ever used. It's got an amazing ability and ridiculous accuracy. And between those two, it has a lot of potential for troubleshooting. Being able to analyze circuits over a period of time, it gives this thing unquestioned ability for troubleshooting. Anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed the review. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Enjoy your week.